to two, finding a safe haven. We see, you know, a high need to support these families. School District 2 stepping up, looking to help hundreds of homeless students. Plus... I'm Alina Howder. Two Roundup families believe their pups were poisoned after their dog's unexpected deaths. We'll tell you more coming up. <laughs> and manage your stress while helping foster dogs with a nonprofit. It was so much fun. Obviously, pet puppies more than did yoga. We'll take you inside a unique yoga class. It's all for a good cause. Your MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. And good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday edition of the 530 News. I'm Andrea Lutz. Growing number of students in our community find themselves looking for a warm meal or a place to rest their heads at night. The numbers are staggering. Over 600 students now considered homeless and enrolled in School District 2. As our Charlie Kleps reports, that number is double what it was five years ago. But the district is looking for ways to reach these students. In just a couple of months, those students will be able to come here to the newly formed Family Resource Center located in downtown Billings at the Lincoln Center to find the resources that they need. For majority of students, schools are a place for learning and growth. We're identifying more homeless families and students than we have in the past. But for the nearly 600 Billings homeless students identified by School District 2, these classrooms also serve as a safe haven. We're seeing that increase from, from previous years, though. I mean, um, you know, three before COVID, it was, you know, in the 300s. It's a number SD2 Student Services Director Kevin Kirkman has seen steadily rise in the past five years, an alarming trend that has the district's full attention. So this will be a food pantry. Kirkman and others in the district have been hard at work establishing this, the district's first ever family resource center. Well, the goal of, of the family resource center is to provide that support. We're not saying that we're gonna be able to do everything, but we wanna be able to support our families so that kids can get to school. The center will be a hub for these families where they can receive donations like shoes, clothes, or school supplies, but also a safe space where they can get help from SD2 community liaisons. We wanna make sure that every student is receiving a quality education and that they're um, given that opportunity the space isn't ready yet. As you can see from the boxes, there's some moving parts, but Kirkman says the plan is to be open next month. Our main goal is getting students to school um, and getting them to class. A new resource that hopes to change the lives of students in Billings. If there's something that we can do for that family or, or support that we can provide, that's what we want to do. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Were you able to get outside today, maybe this weekend? It's all starting to feel a lot less like winter. Two days of temperatures rising into the 60s, but is a cool down ahead? With a first look at the weather on this Sunday, here's our chief meteorologist, Ed McIntosh. And a day like today is the day when we see the contrast in the spring weather. Steve, thanks for sharing this one. You can see the young shoots trying to make their way above ground. I've seen the same thing around my uh, yard as well, where the flowers are trying to do their thing. Meanwhile, St uh, Scott's up at uh, Cook City, where we've got a considerable amount of snow on the ground. Great right now for snowmobilers there. But a look with the Stockman Bank weather cam almanac for the day. Billings, just 8 degrees shy of the record at 63, but it was breezy through the day. Residents in Roundup raising the alarm tonight after two seemingly healthy dogs recently died. The owners claim their beloved pets were poisoned. Marlena Howder looks into the disturbing case. Two families here in Roundup are mourning the unexpected losses of their dogs. After one of the owners found meatballs filled with bluish green crystals here in their backyard, they believe their pups were poisoned. Babies. For Roundup resident Cricket Nichols, her animals are her world. We might have a lot of them, but they are all very, very well taken care of. You know, they get so much attention from everybody that is in our life. But her eight dogs and seven cats received the wrong kind of attention at the end of February. I saw all but one of our cats throw up and all but one of the dogs. Despite aid from her vet, the mysterious illness hit Shasta, Cricket's pregnant two pound chihuahua, the hardest. First she vomited blood and then um, blood coming out of her nose and mouth. A couple of days later, she was gone. And according to Cricket's vet, she was poisoned. So I walked our entire fence line and I found probably 10 or 15. They look like meatballs. Um, as soon as I picked them up, they literally like just disintegrated in my hands. 
and it left behind the kind of blue and bluish green crystals. For Cricket's cousin, Heaven Benson, the story was all too familiar. I called for him on the 13th of February. Um, he was just not, he hadn't eaten in a few days. He, there was um, blood clot vomit uh, for the last couple days about it. Heaven had to put down her 14-year-old black lab blue healer mix Hunter on February 23rd after he suffered from multiple seizures. It devastated my daughter. My son couldn't even be in the room. He had to leave the house until it was over. Heaven's vet told her Hunter was overdosing. Now, the cousins believe their family is being targeted. Cricket called Muscle Shoal County Sheriff's Office to report the incident, but she says they wouldn't take her report. We have a video, but it's not very clear. You can't really tell who it is. So they basically told us our, their hands were tied. They couldn't exactly help us. They just said to watch our pets better. MTN reached out to the Muscle Shoal County Sheriff's Office Friday for more information and was told it has not received any reports of the animals being poisoned. Sheriff Sean Lesnick tells us it can be a difficult crime to prove and intent is hard to prove as well. But for Cricket and Heaven, it's a scary situation, especially with two toddlers in Cricket's care. To whoever is doing this, just why you know why would you put somebody else through this pain because i literally feel like i lost my kid in roundup alina howder mtn news it is a wrap on the state b tournaments here in billings the players making special memories every step of the way but there was another man who also made history over the weekend our alec boffinger explains 48 of Montana's finest put on the stripes this past weekend to officiate the eight high school basketball state tournaments across the state. For Fort Smith's Pat Alden, it represented his first state tournament as an official after nearly 20 years of service. State tournament is uh, actually a, a goal for officials and shoot, uh, I, I was fortunate enough to be one of the last 48 this year, so but, hey, I'm enjoying every, every minute of it and taking it all in like all the other officials there. They helped me, they encouraged me. Uh. Pat's brother Larkin picked up officiating shortly after his brother, and it's still something they bond to over this day. Pat's selection for the State B tournament held added significance as he became the first Crow man in the modern era to referee a state tournament. When he first told me, I think I was more excited than him that he uh, got state. And then just when they first started, he told me that he got championship game. That's, I'm just, you know, everybody's here to watch Basketball players, I'm here to watch Patrick Alden. For me to break chat, I guess, and um, officiating, getting a state tournament, and hey, that brings pride to my community. Um, Crow people, not, just not my family, so it takes pride in all of it too, so it's, it's a win-win all the way around. Alden thought that of the 48 officials in action over the weekend, that only four or five were native. Three of those were at the State B Tournament in Billings, where Harlem's Terry Brocky and Wolf Point's Brock Copenhaver have a wealth of experience. Terry's a legend. He's, he's got 15 state tournaments in 15-16, uh, and I get to he, yeah, ask him for pointers, tips, and he's been through it all, too, so what better, uh, what better mentor as a native, especially Terry. So, like I said, Brock, Brock's working the girls' side with me, too, so... Hey, we work, we've been working games, and it's, it's, it's fun taking it all in. Pat had a busy year between officiating and chasing his daughter who plays for Harden, but he undoubtedly has cemented himself as one of the state's best in stripes. In Billings, Alec Boffinger, MTN Sports. Still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, time to relax and get your body and mind aligned, except for the occasional barking. This new yoga class is providing more benefits than just physical health. We'll explain after the break. <laughs>